Welcome to a large model showman's engine. This is part 8, making an ornate brass cap for the end of the generator pulley. The generator pulley is very well machined from what looks to be stainless steel, but it doesn't seem to fit in with the rest of the engine. I suppose I could paint the end of this pulley and then attempt to line it out. But instead I'm going to make an ornate cap that fits on the end, so at the moment I'm having a look at what I've got to play with. One of my boxes in the workshop is full of things like this, random pieces of brass. This piece is too big and would take too long to process. Alternatively, I could silver solder various components together, as I'm showing here. The copper part, by the way, is an old flange plate that I got for a boiler that I never made. I really do appreciate the skill and craftsmanship that goes into making a copper boiler, but it's not for me. Many years ago, I read a book called Model Boilers and Boiler Making, by K. N. Harris, and the style of writing and all the do's and don'ts in the book really put me off. I felt that it was quite an elitist book, going into great detail about all the pitfalls and problems making copper boilers, so I never bothered after that. Back now to the job at hand. Here's the pulley I've just removed from the generator, and one end of the pulley is marked, so I'm using some 400 grade wet to dry sandpaper to remove the marks, first of all dry, and here I'm using some lubricating oil to make the sandpaper cut better. I'm not going to show the turning process because it's a really simple one, completely freehand, make it up as you go along. This is the back of the part that I made, and the spigot on it fits into the hole in the pulley, which is three quarters of an inch in diameter. The spigot is just a firm fit in the hole, not tight at all, but not slack either. The turning was extremely simple, I just used a round nose lathe tool, and this is how it came out, I think it should be ok. Now it's time for a good clean and polish. First of all I used my polishing spindle in the outer part of the workshop, then I finished off the job by hand using some Brasso wadding. And after a final rub with some cotton cloth it looks like this. Nice and shiny and quite traction engine like. Why didn't I make the piece of brass as big as the pulley? Well, I didn't have a big enough piece of brass. And making a simple cap for a pulley from the really large piece of brass that I showed earlier would have taken forever. But really it's all a matter of individual taste. I liked it this way, showing some of the original stainless steel as well. To fit the cap in place, I'm going to use some Loctite 603. I've smeared quite a lot on the pulley itself. I pushed the cap in place and held it firmly for a minute or two, and now it's a permanent fixture. To remove the brass cap from the pulley is a simple job. I would heat it with my blowtorch to break down the Loctite adhesive, and by heat it, I don't mean heat it to red. You just have to get it hot. Here's the pulley fitted back to the generator, and it's looking good. If anything, it looks a bit anemic. I stood back and looked at the engine for a while, and I realised what the problem was. One area of the pulley needs some paint. I think that the combination of polished brass parts and painted parts look really good. For instance, look at the nameplate below the generator. Polished brass cast lettering and surround with paint in between. I think this is a very good example to allow me to illustrate what I'm talking about. Imagine, if you will, that the nameplate wasn't painted and was just all cast brass. It would look quite like my pulley, a bit anemic and lacking in depth. Similarly, if the entire nameplate was painted red, it would also look wrong. If the lettering and the surround were painted a different colour, that would look diabolical. On such an ornate contraption as a showman's engine, you need to be very careful how you paint things. The colour scheme of the engine is mainly Crimson Lake for the boiler and most of the parts, yellow for the wheels and then a combination of yellow and orange for the lining. Here's the end cap with some Crimson Lake in it. The addition of this small amount of paint really brings the pulley to life and makes it look like part of the engine. Once this paint has fully dried I will clean off any residue. So what do you think? Here's the before which is OK but very plain, functional but not very decorative, and here in this clip, after I've fitted the end cap and painted it, I think it's an improvement. 
If you look closely at the lining on this engine, it's far from perfect, it's done with a paintbrush. It's harder than it looks. In a very inaccessible place, well for me anyway, is a very dirty and grimy pressure gauge. I was going to take it off the engine to clean it up, but as it's connected to the inlet pipe and bolted through the main plate, I decided not to do this. However, after I shot this particular clip, I wiped it over with some panel wipe and now it looks a lot cleaner. And in case you don't know what panel wipe is, it's naphtha. It's the sort of stuff you'd normally put in your Zippo cigarette lighter, which are really useful for lighting fires in miniature steam locomotives. This is the water lifter, and I've got a bit of a puzzle here, I'm really not sure about this. Someone wrapped the thread fully in PTFE tape. And I find that the best way to remove this is to use a brass wire brush. Now I just need to find a nut to fit it. I've got one or two that come quite close to it, but the pitch is wrong. I would think it's some sort of BSP thread. I'll have a look in my box of old BSP fittings. In this series, I'm limiting the painting shots. This is a four and a half inch scale traction engine and it's quite large. Because of the age of this engine, which was built in 1998, the paint over the years has become damaged. I'm repairing the paintwork sympathetically. Luckily most of the spokes are okay because I don't want to paint over the lining and it would be much easier if I could put the wheel on the bench but no I can't do that. So each time I need to move to a different area I have to roll the traction engine back and forth. Sometimes being very large and very strong can be beneficial. Although these days as I've got older and fatter a general difficulty has become apparent during my ballet classes. I can't get up on my toes like I used to. It's difficult enough now doing all this painting whilst nearly sat on the floor. But I'll get there in the end. I'd just like to say stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.